What's up? We're at the Acer's booth at CES 2023, and they've got their own version of what we've seen from a few companies. We've got their new X45 Predator model. It's a 45 inch OLED display running at 240 Hertz, 1440p. It's pretty sweet. This thing is basically what we've seen from a lot of other companies. It's probably LG supplying the panel, uh, similar to the Corsair Xenion Flex, except we're not able to flex it. But because of that, we're probably also not gonna see the flex tax that they've put on those monitors of like three or $400 at least. So honestly, this is now like becoming available for people. It's crazy. I never would have expected a 45 inch OLED to be available to the public in this day and age at the prices that we're seeing. We don't know the exact MSRP of this yet, but if it's at all competitive with everyone else, it's gonna be at least, you know, expensive, don't get me wrong. For those of us who wanna splurge though, a little bit on our display and our graphics card, this might be the one. I mean, it's gonna be beautiful. It's got 98.5% coverage of DCI-P3. It's running at lightning fast pixel response time that OLED's gonna give you. It's also gonna get you an incredible HDR experience with every self-emissive pixel acting as its own dimming zone. Unlike mini LED, which honestly is starting to get eclipsed even when it didn't really you know, stretch its legs all that much. Yeah, 1699, that's pretty much in line with what we're seeing from other people that have this got basically this exact same panel. So if you like Acer for other reasons, then honestly, you're not gonna get screwed over in any way by going with this one. One thing that I absolutely love is this stand. Don't get me wrong, it's big, but it's also a big screen. So you're gonna need that to make sure it's nice and stable. I'll be honest, I haven't played Flight Sim. I don't know the controls. I just clicked ready to fly and here we are. And I can tell you, it looks absolutely stunning. Like the reality is it's really hard to go wrong when it comes to OLED. It just looks so good. It's hard, it's so hard to describe without actually showing it to you in person. And that's the one biggest problem about making videos about displays is that I can't actually show you how good it might look. If I didn't mention it already, it's gonna hit 240 Hertz, which is crazy with the lightning fast pixel response times of OLED. It's just stunning. The 800R curvature as well for a display this size is actually preferable, at least to me personally. There are some who might wanna argue that, you know, it's a bit too much, but when you're getting to this level of ultra wide and size, I really don't think so. You want this curve here, so you don't have to bend your neck every which way to like see the corners of the screens. And you're gonna be kind of up close with this thing anyway. USB-A, USB-A, USB-B, USB-C, uh, display port I'm guessing, and what, HDMI? Whoa, hey guys, I completely forgot about our sponsor, Dbrand. So our sponsor for CES 2023 actually dropped out, but Dbrand footed the bill the only catch is they want me to come out onto the streets and offer tech tips to random people for free. It's, I, I'm not optimistic for how this is gonna go. Excuse me, guys. What's up? Do you want a tech tip? A tech tip? A tech tip. Sure. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, you know when you plug in a USB? Yeah. And it won't go in all the way? Yeah. Uh, don't keep pushing, because there's a reason it's not going. You want to flip it over, probably. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, did that help? Yeah, super helpful. Okay, great. Yeah, thanks, awesome. man. <laughs> Wait, can you do one more thing for me? Yeah. Go to shortlinus.com. Yeah, sure, man. You will? Yeah, You sure. promise? Yeah. Do you want a tech tip? Have you ever swapped a processor? A lot of times. Okay. You yes. know when you take the thermal paste yeah. off of the processor? Yes. Use... Small is better. But you know the isopropyl alcohol you yes. use to take it off? Yes, to rub it off. Yeah, it's, you rub can't it. drink it. No, you can't. No. Okay, can you do one more thing for me after okay. we're done? Okay. Go to shortlinus.com. Short, uh, you follow Linus and you're the short Linus? <laughs> I follow that guy too. <laughs> I'm not the short Linus, I'm the tall Linus. Okay. Now, if you want a smaller display, because let's be real, 45 inches, a bit too big for a lot of people, especially if you've got a smaller desk. Uh, we've got the X27U here, which is another 1440p display, but also OLED. And one of the things that I'm actually really excited about is that we're seeing a lot more 1440p displays this year uh, than we have before. And I think that's because they've just kind of realized that like it's really hard to run 4K. And on top of that, like you're gonna buy, you're gonna be able to save a buck by going with 1440p resolution instead of a 4K resolution. So I'm a big fan personally, and especially when you're up this close, like 27 inches at 1440p is pretty much perfect for me. That's about 110 ppi if I remember correctly. Sorry, I don't I'm not doing any of this. Uh, like off camera right now. This thing is also going to hit 
240 hertz. It's got, an, again, like 98, 99% coverage of DCI-P3. It's got lightning fast pixel response time thanks to it being OLED. And both of these displays are gonna have FreeSync Premium. So you're gonna get a really good variable refresh rate experience if you need it. We've got basically the same stand, again, but a little smaller. So it should have, yeah, essentially the same functionality, which is great. Yep, fantastic. It will, it will. I'm not gonna tilt this the whole, I'm not gonna pivot this the entire way because there's a bunch of cables plugged in and it's not our displays, but it does look like it's gonna pivot to 90 degrees if you wanna go portrait mode. Uh, for IO, it's not bad. We've got a barrel plug for power, uh, what looks like a headphone jack, USB-A, USB-A, USB-B to connect to your PC. USB-C might be power delivery, might be display port, I'm not sure. And what we got here, a display port and two HDMI ports. So there's plenty of IO for basically whatever you want to do. I don't think there's a KVM on this one, but it's also 1099, not 1699. So it's significantly cheaper and you're still getting a absolutely mind blowing level of performance when it comes to 1440p gaming. Honestly, OLED is just fantastic these days. One thing about OLED is that you can make the panels crazy thin without losing any kind of performance or anything like that. And on the back of both of these displays, we've got a like big electronics control box. And then the actual panel though is like razor thin along the edges here. Now, I feel perfectly fine maneuvering it and adjusting it in any way, that's fine. But if you're a little nervous about that sort of thing, then I don't know, just don't worry about it. It's meant to be moved and whatnot. You're good, you're good to go. Don't worry, don't worry. I promise, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. If you wanna save a bit more, you can go with the Nitro here. It's their XV, sorry, I've gotta read this one off the sheet because you know, monitor names. It's an XV27 5K P3. Now, if you do need 4K, because let's be real, as much as I love 1440p and I think it's the right choice for most gamers, 4K looks really good, you guys. It's, it's beautiful. Um, if you want a 4K panel and OLED is kind of out of reach or you're afraid of burn-in and image retention and whatnot, Mini LED is still a fantastic uh, technology. Another major advantage to this guy over the other two that we looked at is it does have slightly more color gamut coverage with 99% of Adobe RGB. And it's still going fast, you guys. Like this thing is 160 hertz with like one millisecond response time. It's got HDR 1000. It's probably hitting over a thousand nits, no problem thanks to Mini LED. And with over 500 zones, you're actually getting a pretty good dimming experience in a screen this size. The only problem with the Nitro that we're seeing here is that unlike our other two that we looked at earlier, this is coming out in Q2 of this year. And I mean, that might change, who knows? Uh, it wasn't even on the list today. We just, they had it out, we saw it, we're filming a video about it. You know I love RGB, look at this. It's a really nice diffusion strip that's arcing across the back here. I'm a really big fan. It's a little understated. Um, they've also got a nice little cable cover here. And the stand looks like it can do basically the same as the other ones. It looks like it can pivot, but once again, we've got a bunch of cables here, so we're not gonna do that. Um, as for the IO, we've got similar IO for this one with USB-B, two USB-A ports, a USB-C port, display port, and then two HDMIs. A little harder to take a look at this one. Sorry, cables are wrapped a little tighter than the other guys, but the reality is you're getting a pretty solid both IO and stand experience with any of these displays. So at the end of the day, you've got to just pick whatever is in your budget and whichever one is right for your experience. Thanks guys, this is Acer's booth at CES 2023. As you can see, they've got a ton of other stuff here too that we haven't really talked about much. They've got pre-builds, they've got some new speakers, they've got some backpacks, they've got a bunch of laptops and portable screens over there too. It all looks sick. We're gonna try to cover as much as we can, but you know, we only have so much time. Thanks for watching.